graders, uh, this is uh, your math video for um, Wednesday, May, <clears throat> let's see, I gotta think about this, May 6th. So um, a couple things we'll be doing, we'll be going back over pages 341 and 340, uh, 341 to 343. So I'm gonna give you those um, answers to those questions. And then we will be looking at our last uh, lesson actually in this chapter, and that is 9-8. So first of all, uh, maybe pause the video, get your homework out, and I'm gonna read through these answers and um, just let you know how, how you were to answer these questions about the shape of distributions. Okay, so remember we did pages 341 to 343, we did questions one through four, then six, and then 11 through 12. And I think it's just best if I read these to you because they're all uh, doing a lot of analyzing of of these distributions and these graphs and tables and so you're just gonna have to really listen if you get a little bit behind pause the video and then you can always uh, rewind it or however that is and listen again and and hopefully get all the um, all the wording to these questions okay so let's start on number one and that's on page 341 number one says vocabulary what term describes a distribution of data that has the same shape on either side of the center. This you should have put symmetry. Okay, so number one, symmetry. Number two, you were looking at these distributions and it says um, the shape of each dis distribution with the description that best fits it. Okay, so there's there's a histogram, there's a, a box and whisker, there's a dot, two dot plots. Okay, now down below there's a little a, little b, little c, and little d. Okay, so which ones match up? So little a says data has an outlier, not symmetrical. Okay, the one that would match that is the capital A, that box and whisker. Now let's go to little b. Data clustered around a peak of six, symmetrical around the peak. Okay, so looking up, the one that matches that would be capital D, that dot plot. Down um, over on the right, the bottom one. Okay, now C, little c, says data has two peaks, not symmetric. Okay, now on little c and little d, I think you could have, you could have um, kind of gone either way. So little c, the book has, it goes with capital C, but I think you could also have said possibly capital B. And then on d, it says data has a gap, no symmetry, the book has capital B, but then again, I think you could have put C. So those two, I think, are a little bit more interchangeable depending on um, how we're looking at those. Okay, so that's number two. All right, now let's go to the next page. For three and four, it says this. For each distribution, identify whether the data has any peaks, gaps, or clusters. Okay, those were the, th those were the things we're supposed to be talking about. Then tell whether the data, the data has symmetry. Okay, well, let's talk about number three first. So we see a dot plot and we could say this, no peaks, no symmetry, clusters around one half and one, and again at three and three and a half, there is a gap between one and three. Okay, so that, that's some wording that you could have said. Those are some things to describe those, those, three, those three words that we've been looking at, uh, peak, gap, clustering, um, and we talked about the other day. Okay, now let's look at number four, and we could say things like this. It peaks at the seven, this histogram, so it's an interval, the seven to eight. Um, we could say a cluster around the seven to eight, and it is uh, symmetrical. Okay, uh, but we, with gaps, we could just say no gaps. No gaps on that one. All right, now we skip number five and we went to six then, and number six says this. Bicycling, the dot plots show the number of miles two cyclists traveled during a training period compared to the distributions. All right, so these are some things we could have said about looking at cyclist A compared to cyclist B. Okay, down below we know it's number of miles and, and how these two different um, cyclists do with their number of miles. Well, here's our, Here's some things we could have said. Dis distribution A is symmetric and clustered around a peak of six. Distribution B shows no clusters 
and is not symmetrical with a peak at eight. So number of miles he peaked at eight. Okay, distribution A is symmetric, so the mean and median would be the same. Okay, those are just a few things we could say about those, those two distributions. Okay, so that's number six. Now the last two, 11 and 12. 11 was a multiple choice. You should have put a uh, letter D. And number 12 was asking us about the range. So you had to find the largest, the greatest, and subtract the least. And you should have come up with 21. Okay, so that's 11 and 12. Alrighty, hopefully you did well on that or understanding this whole idea of, of shape of distributions, making sure we understand how to use the word cluster, peak, gap, and symmetry. Those are, those are four words that we're really wanting to focus on and know what they mean and how to use them. Okay, the last lesson in this chapter, I can't believe it, we've come to an end, um, is 9-8. And so I've put it up here on the board and we are going to read through this together. And the last one is talking about statistical questions. So it's not even as much math as a little more just reading and, and relating it to math things because Today we're gonna to look at questions that we could ask, things that we could ask people so that we could then take the information, the, the data that we, we, we receive, and then we could use that and put it into the things that we've been talking about, things like um, a mean and a mode and a median, finding the center uh, of, of distribution and data. Uh, we could put those into dot plots, histograms, um, a frequency chart. So taking information, and then, and then being able to display it to show people, okay, this is what I gathered, this is the data I gathered, and this is what I found out. So in order to do that, to, to gather data, we need good questions. And so we need what we call statistical questions. So two things that we're gonna, we're gonna be thinking about is, is that question a statistical question? And then the second big thing we need to be thinking about is that did I um, ask a question and is there any bias in that question? So those are the two big words that we're gonna think about and talk about. Okay, the first thing is statistical questions. Now, this is the definition of a statistical question. It's right there in your book. This is on page 345, but this is what we're gonna ask ourselves. A statistical question is one for which you expect to get a variety of answers. So, when you ask a question that's a good statistical question, it is not just a, a yes or no. It is not a right or wrong question. You could come up with tons of different answers. You're gathering information, you're gathering data. Now, you can analyze the distribution. So this is what we've been talking about, this, these, how the data looks, and tendencies of those answers using statistical measures. All these things that we've been learning about that would be those statistical measures. We could put this data into those and show um, someone um, information that would pertain to them, that would help them, you know, learn about, you know, learn about whatever we were studying. So we could do this a lot in school. Go around, ask a class uh, a statistical question, gather all this data, and then be able to put that into some type of, of a table graph or format and then show people things about us. So um, let's look in the book. I think we just can read through these to really understand what is a good statistical question. Remember, it has to have a lot of answers. It cannot just be a right or wrong. Okay, so here's some really good ones under identifying statistical questions on this page 345 that we could just read through. It asks us, tell one of the question is statistical if it is, identify possible answers. If not, explain why not. Okay, so let's look at A. Now, is this a statistical question? Let's ask ourselves. How many states are in the United States? Okay, so is that statistical? Nope, that's not statistical because there is one answer. We should know the answer to this. So we'd say, this is not statistical. There's just one answer, 50, and a, and a, a statistical question needs to ask a group of people um, something that has multiple answers. So here's a, here's a better one, and this is good. They give us a, a way that this could be a statistical question, and that is how many states have you visited? So if I ran around the classroom and I was asking everyone how many states are in the United States, everyone should be giving me the same answer if they know this answer. Now, 
if I said, how many states have you visited? Well, obviously now I'm gonna get all kinds of different answers. So that's now a statistical question. Okay, so hopefully you're kind of seeing the difference in those. Now let's go to B. What is your favorite vegetable of sixth graders in your school? Okay, now this is a, this is a good statistical question because we're gonna get lots of different answers. Um, not everyone's gonna have the same answer, so it's not a right or wrong answer. Okay, C, how many siblings do I have? This is not a statistical question because I would just give you one answer. I have two siblings, two brothers. But now if we turned it around and went around the room and asked how many siblings do you have? Now this is a statistical question because if I'm asking every single person, I'm gonna get a lot of different answers. But if you're just asking me and only me, um, there's just one answer. Okay, so that's kind of like that little, just switch in the wording there. Um, that would make it not statistical and then statistical. Okay, now up at the top, um, it says there's a quick check. So let's, let's see if we're getting the hang of this. It, it says, tell whether the question is a, is a statistical question. If it is, identify possible answers. If not, explain why not. Okay, A, let's look at this one. How many, how many students are taller than six feet? Well, that is not statistical because there should only be one possible answer. Okay, now let's go to B. What size shoe do you wear? Well, yes, this could be statistical because now if we go around and ask everyone in the room, we're gonna get a lot of different answers. So now we're gonna have a lot of data, a lot of different answers on that one. Okay, but the other one, there's, you're just gonna count them up, you'd have, everyone would have the same number. There's three people or whatever that are taller um, than six feet. Okay, now the last thing we wanna talk about is identifying a bias. When you ask a statistical question, you're gathering data from people, you need to keep your preference out of it. So something that is bias is, is you are putting in your opinion. Okay, so you need to be careful not to do that when you're asking a statistical question. You're trying to gather data that is, <clears throat> that is true information from people. But if you put in your bias, your preference, then you're trying to kind of manipulate the answer. You're trying to um, persuade someone to answer it the way you want it to be answered. So they've given us a couple examples there. And um, the first one said, would you prefer to vacation in sunny Bermuda or rainy London? Well, those, we need to take those adjectives out of the question and just ask someone, would you rather vacation in Bermuda? Or London take the adjectives out even if you think well I I think they were trying to persuade people to say Bermuda but maybe you do love rain so you're like oh I'd love London but we need to take those out and just ask the basic question we don't need to have our preferences put into the question we want to get true data so we need to make sure that we're not trying to persuade someone with the question okay so better better question would be would you prefer to vacation in Bermuda or London Okay, when you're looking at a question, bottom line is you just need to make sure you don't put in those, pretty much those adjectives that are, are popping into your head and maybe trying to make someone think the way you want, want them to think. Okay, so that's that whole thing on bias and I think we pretty much understand what, what that is. Okay, uh, questions now. You're going to be looking at pages 346 and 347 you're going to be doing questions one through 15 all. Now, be very careful in reading every little section because you will be doing different things. So this is a good time to just be working on reading and reading comprehension. Uh, what is the question asking me? What do they want um, from this question? These are all not cut and dry, the same thing every time. So I want you to be a super good reader um, and go through, go through these questions one through 15. We will talk about these. Um, this is your Wednesday video. So we'll be talking about these on Zoom on Thursday. And I just wanna see where we're at and how we're doing on these uh, different types of, of thoughts, statistical questions, and keeping this bias out of our statistical questions. So work on one through 15, um, reading through those directions. And then uh, we'll make sure we have this ready to show on Zoom on Thursday and, and be ready to kind of discuss it as a group. 
Okay, that is it for today. Hopefully, um, over here is the page pages, so you can um, also get that down or write that down. It will also be in your email, so you can uh, go to that. And I will see you on Zoom tomorrow. Remember, Thursday is our review day, so you will just be getting some review uh, to be doing on that day. And then next week, we're actually done with our chapter, so next week I'll be doing um, a bit of a review with you, and then we'll actually be taking kind of a modified test over this information in, in this chapter. Okay, have a great rest of the day, and, um, and I will look forward to seeing you guys on Thursday on Zoom. Okay, bye-bye.